Having a conversation this morning with Decorah High School Activities Director Adam Riley. Obviously, uh, the situation related to COVID-19 is constantly changing in the state. And with the winter sports season coming up, some new rules and regulations have been put in place in the Northeast Iowa Conference. But first things first, Adam, obviously, it hasn't been 100% successful. But for the most part, uh, the conference... Uh, and the state of Iowa has made summer sports and fall sports work. Would that be fair to say? I, I, I think there are elements. We've done so. We've done so well. We've done so safely. Um, I don't think we're all ready to take a victory lap, so to speak. But um, I, I think there's a lot of things in conversation that have went right. You know, the uh, University of Wisconsin just released a study yesterday in which they studied, they uh, surveyed all the uh, schools in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, in relation to the number of COVID transmissions that they knew happened athlete to athlete in um, in high school athletics for what they had for for what they put in place for mitigation strategies and they uh, surveyed it one um, and it was put out put out by uh, their um, their College of Medicine and and, and uh, pretty sound in terms of what that was at and uh, I think our numbers um, we can't speak to exactly our numbers because that full fledged data collection hasn't occurred but. Uh, we know we made it all the way through the summer months without an athlete to athlete transmission through us uh, participating in our activities. Um, and I, I think it's pretty safe to say that uh, the fall went very well. I mean, um, some, some different groups got, got shut down uh, on that end of things based off of some concern over transmission that maybe would occur through that contact, but we know that the transmissions occurred outside. So um, it's, it, it's been really, really well, but as you probably will allude to in some of your other questions, moving indoors is, is, is going to be a completely different uh, animal. Um, and obviously we can see that uh, as, as we've hit the fall and where, where COVID numbers are nationwide too. And when you look at uh, the on the field transmission, uh, that's been relatively low, pretty much nationwide, but if there's been an issue related to sports, it's a lot of it has been the social gatherings uh, related to the events that took place would is that uh, what you're being told as well yeah I, I think that's where some of the the, the concern is I, and it certainly makes sense if we pull you know if all of a sudden we'd have a basketball game or wrestling meet and we pull 1500 people even if they're masked into a gymnasium um you know yeah that pretty much puts the the head right on the nail for what would be a super spreader event uh on that end of things and outdoor settings obviously um People feel much safer. It's it's the evidence would support that we've seen that that they are safer in some of those outdoor settings if we put some good strategies in to make sure we do our best to promote people being spread out um, um, with that. So uh, we're excited. Our, our our element that we really want is we want the kids to be able to have an opportunity to do something uh, within those hours, and we want to keep kids in school. That's kind of where our overriding mission is uh, as we make decisions when it comes to that, and and we're going to continue to try to adhere to that as best we can, and and. We know it's trying everybody's patience uh, between both parents um, and students and, and, and coaches and, and everything else. But uh, we know there's high value, even if we have to make some modifications, have some opportunities for kids to be able to do some things. So. And when you look at the mere fact that activities are taking place, do you feel that uh, having that caveat out there has allowed uh, students and uh, student athletes and uh, students uh, who participate in the uh, fine arts uh, to maybe uh, watch their P's and Q's that much better to do what they can to make sure these activities are still going on? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's been a it's 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 been a really good fall. We have a few things where obviously you know events like uh, a Saturday Halloween <laughs> And some other things clearly has ha have had some impact on our numbers, but when we look at our numbers just within the school and within the district, it's been really good. Um, and, and adults can really work to try to be able to get ki keep kids focused and accountable. And, and the biggest thing that I would really say from the fall is we saw a lot of kids holding each other accountable. Uh, which is really kind of fun to see from the ad adult standpoint of saying, hey, we're willing to make sacrifices uh, to make sure that we're able to have a season and continue to do some things. Um, and, and it certainly eliminates all the discussions in the hallways. I mean, we, we've, we've been masked in our building from the beginning of the school year. And um, it certainly has a warrant of a conversation when you look at a kid in the eye and say, do you want to tell that kid that you're sitting next to in class that he all of a sudden can't do something um, as it relates? And that, that gets everybody saying, hey, let's, let's start pulling the rope together. It's, it's been really positive, even more positive than maybe what we would have anticipated. 
As for the regulations that will be in place for wrestling and for uh, basketball and uh, for uh, boys swimming uh, here in the fall, what will those regulations be? Um, you know, there's a lot of similarities. We had bowling into this as well. Uh, when it comes to the management of those events um, and of those sports in relation to our physical distancing, when we're masked, when, it, when we are required to be masked, uh, obviously with the level of the physical activity um, with that. So those are all pretty standard water procedures as far as how we, we'd be able to do that. That's very similar to what we've, we've seen both in the summer and in the fall. Uh, the differences are going to be in terms of our, our attendance and, and who's going to be able to be and come and spectate during those events um, uh, on that end of things. So for bowling right now, we know for our home meets, there's not, there's just not enough space with the number of bowlers that we have to have spectators come in uh, on that end of things. For swimming, um, there's some restrictions that kind of ebb and flow based off of where numbers are at with Luther. Um, but swimming girls and boys basketball wrestling, we know it's gonna be two spectators per student athlete uh, on that end of things that are gonna be allowed to be admitted to that event um, while that is going on. So um, we've, we've got some procedures that we're still kind of evolving within the conference to get some people on the same page, knowing each conference facility is a little bit different. Um, and, and, and each family or each student athlete is gonna get a card that they're gonna be able to give to their two family members and they need to present that. Uh, when it comes time to be admitted to the event, and then that gives them the opportunity to pay, use their pass, whatever it is um, for that. So we're going to be able to control it um, through, through that way. And then, of course, the other management element is we've been in pretty good shape. Knock on wood in the fall, it went really well. We've been able to do a lot of really good things to live stream those events for those people who are unable to attend. So um, we look forward to being able to do that through both uh, the NFHS network. Um, so if people haven't registered for that, they can go to the nfhsnetwork.com and make sure they uh, type in Decora. So they do it through the Decora page. So that revenue actually helps. Uh, a portion of that revenue comes back to us um, uh, as the school district and or YouTube, depending on what our, our physical camera capabilities are in our a number of events we've been able to successfully do through our YouTube Live, everything from our variety show this last weekend uh, to swimming at Luther um, and that of things, a number of our middle school events we've been able to do it. So um, we've had a lot of success. We feel you really feel blessed that we've been able to still reach out and, and keep people connected to what we're doing that way. What happens when you go to a in venue that is not a part of the Northeast Iowa Conference? Yeah, so we've, we've had some collaboration with the Upper Iowa Conference. Uh, we have not completely been ready to talk with the WAMAC and uh, the MVC, which would be other schools that we compete with uh, on that end of things. Um, it'll be very similar for the Upper Iowa Conference. They'll have a card system that they're, they've agreed to be able to put in place, knowing that a number of our Northeast Iowa Conference and Upper Iowa Conference schools compete against each other. So um, as we set with that, we'll be ready to be able to present those cards at the families and it's just two per and then that's going to allow them to ad admit, you know, we'd had some success in the fall with a lot of wristbands and in, in working wristbands out. Uh, the problem is, is when we hit the winter events, um, you know, we're looking at a, at least three to five events per week. Um, and that's a very interesting wristband carousel that's going to happen uh, at any given point in time. So uh, we're, we're going to stick with the cards right now. And then hopefully as we go along, hopefully this won't last forever. We'll be ready to have some, some digital ticketing options um, within the next uh, year for, for sure when it comes time to do some things that will help monitor this depending on how long this would continue. Are these going to be in for the entire season or is there a point we'll, where you will reassess uh, what's going on related to COVID? Yeah, so... The reality is um, that, that we're getting while the governor's current proclamation runs through December 14th, um, we know throughout the winter the number of spectators that we're going to be able to have in our facility is going to be limited uh, on that end of things. You know, granted, do we hope that things get better? And obviously, we would look at after the holiday break that we'd obviously be able to have more spectators admitted into our facilities. Yes, at that point in time, uh, we'll probably use a similar system as what we've discussed, only issue more cards per athlete. Uh, so when we do that, we can kind of stick to where we're at. We originally said prior to the two spectators that we, we wanted to place priority on families and students being able to get into the games uh, because obviously the high school, part of the high school experience is still being able to have students be able to be a part of, uh, support each other, everything else, and then making sure our families. So we'll have a similar card um, option to be able to present that will allow for that, that admittance for that event if things get better. Um, and hopefully they will. Um, in due time so we can get a few more people in the facilities to watch and, and see the events in person. And I understand that uh, there's going to be some frustration. There's going to be some heartbreak and uh, not being able to see maybe a brother or a sister and 
your split families uh, with everything like that. Uh, how much emotion uh, should we allow to uh, be expressed, but at the same time uh, have the ability to step back and realize that, you know, you might not be able to be there, but you're a young uh, person uh, in your family is still allowed to compete. And that's what it's all about. Uh, where's that uh, delicate balancing act right now? Yeah, you know, so we've really tried to focus on two two guiding principles in relation to our strategies when it comes time to put together for our specific events. Um, and, and one is obviously, as I stated earlier, we want to make sure that students are in, uh, in school um, and that we can make sure no matter what we do um, and any decisions that we make are going to be set to be able to say that staff and students are going to be able to follow these mitigation strategies. We're going to be able to stay in school as long as we can. And the safety part will take care of itself if we're able to answer those questions as we go along. And the activities are a big part of that. The second big piece to, to probably answer your question a little bit more is we, we really want, we want to promote gratitude. Um, and I think every family and every person, if you really get down to the nuts and bolts and the nitty gritty of a situation is saying, Hey, can I handle not have being a spectator at my son or daughter's event, even if we have to go to no fans on that end of things to know that they still have an opportunity to be active and participate in that activity that they like, as opposed to going home to school, home from school after day, after every day after school and having nothing to do. Um, I think everybody um, knows that that gratitude when it comes to, in spite of all the frustrations and stress that we feel. So we've really tried to express that to the students and staff, no matter what, we are going to have gratitude. We're not going to spend time talking about what we can't do. We're going to spend time talking about the opportunity that's still out in front of us, because obviously even in our bordering states, it's pretty clear um, that, that we're getting some opportunities that some other student athletes aren't, and we need to really, really be happy uh, and, and express that gratitude and gracious for that. And what's your overall uh, message to uh, the Decora community, to the uh, Northeast Iowa commun Conference community, uh, to uh, really everybody uh, related to uh, high school activities as of this time? Yeah, I mean, as I look at the winter sports in and of it is, uh, um, you know, that gratitude, uh, that, that patience that has been tested for all of us. And is going to be tested even more as we move along. Um, you know, those opportunities that are in front of us, we need to be appreciative of them. Um, and, and the other piece that I go back, if I, if I, if I look back on the fall sports, um, you know, we've, we've held a lot of events. We've done so. Uh, with safety, has it been perfect? No. I mean, we'd be denying ourselves when it comes time to do it, but we've created some really, really nice opportunities as a result of the combined efforts of a lot of people. I, I put the kids at the top of the list as far as them falling in line and, and the kids can do it in terms of meeting some of those expectations that we need to make. Um, coaches are trying to coach and have the best a competitive non intramural feel like of a season that they possibly can on top of all the work that they're doing teaching in the classroom they've been absolutely outstanding and then then that that other piece is the support of the parents um, those three main entities being able to work and collaborate together have allowed us to have this successful summer and fall that we've had and it's going to take probably our best effort yet um, as we go into the winter sports season to make sure that we're able to do it you know we successfully we didn't have to shut down any of our activities um, as we went through the fall because of everybody's efforts. Um, I, if you'd have told me that in the fall, I'd have said, uh, I'm not so sure that that's going to happen. And, and I think we still have those same feelings as we enter into this winter season. Um, but everybody working and collaborating together is going to, going to, going to, it's what it's going to take for this to happen. All right, Adam, we appreciate you uh, updating us as the winter sports season uh, is still going on. Uh, Iowa sports still going on and uh, kids are still getting opportunities. That's the big picture. Uh, us adults, uh, we can figure out the rest. Yes, we can. We just got to find a way to, you know, <laughs> peacefully have our disagreements and go from there. <laughs> Adam Riley joining us to talk about uh, the new regulations related to uh, spectator sports in the Northeast Iowa Conference for this winter.